Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. And welcome back to the year of mice and rats. You know, I haven't looked at a mouse-related movie in weeks, ever since I got forced under lockdown last month. Yeah, I did look at the Secret of Nim sequel, along with Fun and Fancy Free, and The Rescuers. Speaking of which, I don't know if I'll be able to blog The Rescuers Down Under anytime soon due to the social distancing law. But if the virus does die during the summer, I just hope that I can get my friend Daniel Guzman to collaborate with me. So anyway, for today's episode, I decided to look at a live-action mouse-related comedy, which is not only the first DreamWorks movie that I've ever seen, but it's also the directorial debut of Gore Verbinski. Released on December 19, 1997, the movie is Mouse Hunt. So, let's get hunting. When their string magnate father dies, brothers Ernie and Lars move into his decrepitated mansion, struggling to keep a promise to never sell the now unprofitable string factory. The brothers decide that restoring the house, the last thing to be built by a famous architect, could bring them a great deal of money. But during their restoration attempts, Ernie and Lars are continually frustrated by a malicious mouse that keeps destroying their efforts. So, what do I think of the movie? Well, while it wasn't really a huge critical hit in theaters, this movie has got to be one of the funniest films that I've ever seen during my childhood. But let's move on to Mustang Notes. As I stated earlier, this was the very first movie directed by Gore Verbinski. Before he directed the first three Pirates of the Caribbean films, along with Rango and The Lone Ranger. The film's screenplay was written by Adam Rifkin. who also wrote the screenplay for Disney's Underdog. It was also the very first family film to be released by DreamWorks Pictures, which was founded in 1994 by Steven Spielberg, Jeffrey Katzenberg, and David Geffen. Also to note, the film is set in the late 20th century, though with styles humorously ranging from the 1940s to the 1990s. In my opinion, the house in the movie, while old and dusty, looks huge and grand, and it is surprising that it was built by an architect named Charles Lyle LaRue. Plus, I may not know anything about string, but the factory in the film looks kind of interesting, despite the trouble that the business has been going through. However, to me, most of the atmosphere looks kind of gray due to the winter setting. Also, I think most of the humor is kind of reminiscent to films like Home Alone and Tom and Jerry. However, the scene where the mayor suffers a heart attack after eating a cockroach was really gross. And the cat pound scene was really dark. Especially when Catzilla breaks out of his box to chase the mouse. Also, the part where the house got flooded and collapses was really over the top. Also, I think the film's ending, nowadays, gives me a bit of Ratatouille vibes, 
when the string factory gets renovated into a string cheese factory. And now let's move on to the cast. Let's begin with the film's titular mouse. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think this little creature, who doesn't show up until 21 minutes into the film, is really adorable, and it's also very clever and crafty, especially when it outsmarts Ernie and Lars several times, and when it avoids many traps. And I don't mean just ordinary mouse traps, but a broom, a meat hammer, a vacuum, a shotgun, even a monster cat named Catzilla, and an exterminator. Next we have Ernie Smuts, played by Nathan Lane, who got to be in Disney's The Lion King, Astro Boy, and The Producers. Ernie used to run a five-star restaurant, but he got fired when the mayor died while eating there. To me, while Ernie is kind of a great chef, I think he can be a bit of a douchebag a lot throughout the movie. And I think the stupidest thing that Ernie does in this film is call Zepco to sell the factory, which is followed by him getting hit by a bus while being distracted by two hair model women. His brother Lars is played by Lee Evans. To me, Lars is more likable than Ernie due to his loyalty to his family. And he's also a very sympathetic character. And I really felt bad for Lars when his money-grubby wife dumps him and kicks him out of the house and during the scene where his clothes got unraveled by the factory machines. We also have Ernie and Lars' recently deceased father, Rudolph, played by the late William Hickey, who got to be in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation and The Nightmare Before Christmas. Now, there's not much to say about him, except for the fact that, in life, he was a wealthy string magnate, and in his will, he left his sons not only the string factory, but also a ceramic egg, which got smashed, a box of cigars, which contained a cockroach, a collection of spoons, and, of course, the old mansion where the mouse lives. It should also be noted that this was William Hickey's last movie that he starred in before his death. Other actors in the film include Vicki Lewis, Michael Jeter, Christopher Walken, and Ernie Sabella. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Mouse Hunt was really enjoyable and hilarious, despite the fact that it was not a critical success in theaters. The gags were alright, for the most part, while some of it was forced, over-the-top, and obvious. Ernie was really unlikable, mostly, while Lars was pretty sympathetic. But, I think for the sake of the slapstick, I think this movie is worth a watch if you like comedies like Home Alone. So, my rating for this movie will be a 79% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next blog, Mustang Power. Oh,